Once upon a time, there was a man called Chuck Wendig, also known as... Fucklechuck. Fucklechuck was an SJW on Twitter who wrote books that nobody liked. One day, Fucklechuck decided to irrationally attack the greatest book ever written, The Lord of the Rings. Fucklechuck said, Loads unpopular opinion shotgun. Tried to read Lotter a bunch and couldn't get through it. World building is not plot. Your book shouldn't read like an RPG manual, but should also make me wish someone made your book into an RPG. The chosen one is a tired narcissistic trope. Let's see. Your feast scene is too long. Your world is too white and male and straight. Dash. And ironically not fantastic enough. What happened in medieval England is not relevant to Magica the Dragoon lands. Some are saying, but these are not unpopular opinions. And I'd posit that to some they are. And I shouldn't be commenting much. Dash. I don't write or read the genre very often. So I'm kind of trampling someone else's territory. And while we're at it, here are some more unpopular opinions about epic fantasy. Fantasy. The bigger the series, the likelier it is that it unspools into minutia and footnotes and chaos. Killing characters is a cheap way of building emotional effect. Read The Expanse instead. I think it's less your assumption about the tweet and more talking to me like I don't write genre books and didn't work in the RPG industry for over a decade. I wasn't! Read the thread. I was making a list is unpopular opinions about epic fantasy. One of those opinions was that I didn't much care for Lotter. Christ on a cookie. Now I love The Expanse because it's a great book series. It's not a great show. Fuck the show. But I'm also not mentally fucking retarded, so I would never in my life compare The Expanse to The Lord of the Rings. Because while I love them both to death, one is objectively fucking better. Well, Fucklechuck is a novelist who writes Star Wars books. Not the good Star Wars books like the Thrawn trilogy, though. He writes the Disney Star Wars books. And I thought to myself, well, Fucklechuck seems to be a really great writer who has many a sub three star review view on his books, so he must know writing better than J.R.R. Tolkien. And let me tell you, Fucklechuck's writing is like nothing I've ever witnessed in my entire fucking life. So together, let's gather around the online campfire, and I shall read to thee the deep and epic mythology that is Fucklechuck's brilliant writing, because clearly he knows better than everybody else. And before Fucklechuck tries to get this video taken down for infringing upon the rights of his literary masterpiece, I am only reading the excerpt that is publicly available on Amazon. So get chucked, Mr. Fuckle. Ahem. Star Wars Aftermath, book one of The Aftermath Trilogy. Chuck Wendig. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. Coruscant. Then, Monument Plaza. Chains rattle as they lash the neck of Emperor Palpatine. Ropes follow suit. Dash. Lassos looping around the statue's middle. The mad cheers of the crowd as they pull and pull and pull. Disappointed groans as the stone fixture refuses to budge. But then someone whips the chains around the back ends of a couple heavy gauge speeders. And then engines warble and hum to life. Dash. The speeders gun it and again the crowd pulls. The sound like a giant bone breaking. A fracture appears at the base of the statue. More cheering, yelling, and applause as it comes crashing down. The head of the statue snaps off, goes rolling and crashing into a fountain. Dark water splashes. The crowd laughs. And then the whooping of klaxons. Red light strobe. Three airspeeders swoop down from the traffic lanes above. Imperial Police. Red and black helmets, the glow of their lights reflected back in their helmets. There comes no warning, no demand to stand down. The laser cannons at the fore of each airspeeder open fire. Red bolts sear the air. The crowd is cut apart. Bodies dropped and stitched with fire. But still, those gathered are not cowed. They are no longer a crowd. They are a mob. 
They start picking up hunks of the Palpatine statue and lobbing them up at the airspeeders. One of the speeders swings to the side to avoid an incoming chunk of stone. Dash. And it bumps another speeder, interrupting its fire. Coruscanti citizens climb up the stone spire behind both speeders. Dash. A spire on which are written the imperial values of order, control, and the rule of law. Dash and begin jumping onto the police cruisers. One helmeted cop is flung from his vehicle. The other crawls out onto the hood of his speeder, opening fire with a pair of blasters. Dash. Just as a hunk of stone cracks him in the helmet, knocking him to the ground. The other two airspeeders lift higher and keep firing. Screams and fire and smoke. Two of those gathered. Dash. A father and son... Row Rack and Jack. Dash. Quick Dash Duck behind the collapsed statue. The sounds of the battle unfolding right here in Monument Plaza don't end. In the distance, the sound of more fighting, a plume of flames, dashes of blaster fire. A billboard high up in the sky among the traffic lanes suddenly goes to static. The boy is young, only 12 standard years, not old enough to fight. Not yet. He looks to his father with pleading eyes. Over the din, he yells, But the battle station was destroyed, Dad! The battle is over! They just watched it only an hour before. The supposed end of the Empire. The start of something better. The confusion in the boy's shining eyes is clear. He doesn't understand what's happening. But Rorak does. He's heard tales of the Clone Wars. Dash. Tales spoken by his own father. He knows how war goes. It's not many wars, but just one, drawn out again and again, cut up into slices so it seems more manageable. For a long time, he's told his son not the truth, but the idealized hope. One day, the Empire will fall, and things will be different for when you have children. But that may still come to pass. Now a stronger, sharper truth is required. Jack, dash, the battle isn't over. The battle is just starting. He holds his son close. Then he puts a hunk of statue in the boy's hand, and he picks one up himself. Part 1 Now, star lines streak across the bright black. A ship drops out of hyperspace, colon, uncapitalized. A little starhopper, a one-dash person ship. Favored by many of the less desirable factions out here in the Outer Rim Dash. The pirates, the bookies, the bounty hunters, and those with bounties on their heads to hunt. This particular ship has seen action. Colon. Uncapitalized. Plasma scarring across the wings and up its tail fins. Semicolon. A crumpled dent in the front end as it was kicked by an Imperial walker. All the better for the ship to blend in. Ahead, colon. Uncapitalized, the planet Akiva, a small planet, dash. From here, striations of brown and green, thick white clouds swirling over its surface. The pilot, Wedge Antilles, once red leader and now, dash. Well, now something else, a role without a formal title as yet because things are so new, so different, so wildly up in the air, dash. Sits there and takes a moment. It's nice up here. Quiet. No TIE Fighters. No blasts across the bow of his X-Wing. No X-Wing, in fact, and though he loves flying one, it's nice to be out. No Death Star. Dash. And here, Wedge shudders because he helped take down two of those things. Some days that fills him with pride. Other days it's something else, something worse, like he's drawn back to it. The fight's still going on all around him. But that isn't today. Today it's quiet. Wedge likes the quiet. He pulls up his data pad, scrolls through the list with a tap of the button on the side. End of sentence, parenthesis. He has to hit it a few extra times to get it to go, Dash. If there's one thing he looks forward to when all this is over, it's that maybe they'll start to get new tech. Somehow, this data pad had actual sand in it, and that's why the buttons stick. End parenthesis. The list of planets clicks past. He's been to, let's see, five so far. Florum, Ryloth, Hinari, 
Abafar, Radonia. This planet, Akiva, is the sixth on the list of many too many. It was his idea, this run. Somehow, the remaining factions of the Empire are still fueling their war effort even months after the destruction of the second battle station. Wedge had the notion that they must have moved out to the Outer Rim, dash. Study your history and it's easy to see that the seeds of the Empire grew first out here, away from the core systems, away from the prying eyes of the Republic. Wedge told Akbar, Mon Mothma, colon, Could be that they're at it again, hiding out there. Akbar said it made some sense. After all, didn't Mustafar hold some importance to the Imperial leadership? Rumors said that's where Vader took some of the Jedi long ago, torturing them for information before their execution. And now Vader's gone. Palpatine too. Almost there. Wedge thinks. Dash. Once they find the supply lines that are bolstering the Imperials, he'll feel a whole lot better. He pulls up the comm tries to open a channel to command and... dash. Nothing. Maybe it's broken. It's an old ship. Wedge fidgets at the side, pulls up the personal comm relay that hangs there at his belt. Dash. He taps the side of it, tries to get a signal. Once more, uncapitalized, nothing. His heart drops into his belly, feels a moment like he's falling, because what all this adds up to is... colon... The signal's blocked. Some of the criminal syndicates still operating out there have technology to do that locally. Dash. But in the space above the planet, no, no way. Only one group has that tech. His jaw tightens. The bad feeling in the well of his gut is swiftly justified as ahead a Star Destroyer punctures space with a knife tip as it drops out of hyperspace. Wedge fires up the engines. I have to get out of here. A second Star Destroyer slides in next to the first. The panels across the Star Hopper's dash begin blinking red. They see him. What to do? What did Han always say? Just fly casual. The ship is disguised as it is for a reason, Colin. It looks like it could belong to any 2-bit smuggler out here on the fringe. Akiva's a hotbed of criminal activity. Coruscant Satrap Governors, various syndicates competing for resources and opportunities. A well-known black market dash, once decades ago the Trade Federation had a droid manufacturing facility here. Which means if you want some off-dash the dash books droid, you can come here to buy one. The Rebel Alliance procured many of its droids right here, as a matter of fact. New Dilemma No, capitalized. What now? Fly down to the planet to do aerial recon as was the original plan, Dash? Or plot a course back to Chandrilla? Something's up. Two destroyers appearing out of nowhere? Blocked comms? That's not nothing. It means I found what I'm looking for. Maybe even something much better. That means, colon, capitalized, time to plot a course out of here. That'll take a few minutes, though, Dash. Heading inward from the Outer Rim isn't as easy as taking a long stride from here to there. It's a dangerous jump. Endless variables await, colon. Uncapitalized. Nebula clouds. Asteroid fields. Floating bands of star junk from various skirmishes and battles. Last thing Wedge wants to do is pilot around the edge of a black hole or through the center of a star going supernova. The calm crackles. They're hailing him. The crisp Imperial voice comes across the channel. This is Star Destroyer Vigilance. You have entered Imperial space. To which Wedge thinks, This isn't Imperial space. What's going on here? Identify yourself. Fear lances through him, sharp and bright as an electric shock. This isn't his realm. Talking. Lying. A scoundrel like Solo could convince a Jawa to buy a bag of sand. Wedge is a pilot, but it's not like they didn't plan for this. Calrissian worked on the story. He clears his throat, hits the button dash. This is Jev Hassan, piloting an HH-87 Starhopper, uncapitalized, the rover. He transmits his data card, sending over credentials. A pause. Identify the nature of your visit. Light cargo. 
What cargo? The stock answer is uncapitalized droid components. But that may not fly here. He thinks quickly, Dash. Akiva. Hot. Wet. Mostly jungle. Dehumidifier parts. Pause. An excruciating one. The nav computer runs through its calculations. Almost there. A different voice comes through the tinny speaker. A woman's voice. Got some steel in it. Less crisp. Nothing lilting. This is someone with some authority, Dash. Or, at least, someone who thinks she possesses it. She says, Jeff Hassan, pilot number 45236, Deveronian, yes? That checks out. Calrissian knows Hassan. The smuggler, Dash, sorry. Legitimate pilot and businessman, Dash, did work smuggling goods to help Lando build Cloud City. And he is indeed... Deveronian. You got it, Wedge says. Another pause. The computer is done with its calculations. Another ten seconds at most. Numbers crunching, flickering on the screen. Funny, the woman says. Our records indicate that Jeff Hassan died in Imperial custody. Please let us correct our records. The hyperspace computer finishes its calculations. He pushes the thruster forward with the heel of his hand, Dash, but the ship only shudders. Then the Starhopper trembles again and begins to drift forward toward the pair of Star Destroyers. It means they've engaged the tractor beams. He turns on the weapon controls. If he's gonna get out of this, it's now or never.